Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia video, and we are live recording a character guide for Squall FR Echo. So Squall just dropped, he's got a really nice rework here. We just did some pretty hype polls. Uh, those polls should be on my channel if you want to check them out. I actually remembered to record them this time. The last couple you've had to watch the, the, the live stream recap or the replay uh, if you wanted to see it. Um, but for those of you unfamiliar with Squall, uh, he's pretty much just a damage dealer through and through. That's really what he is. He does specialize in AoE damage. Um, he's what I would say a fairly selfish damage dealer. So what that means is he doesn't have a lot of utility. He doesn't really provide a lot of buffs for the party other than his BT auras, which did get a lot better with his rework. So I will give him props to that. Um, he's the type of character that if you run him, I would probably just run like double supports or like a support in an off turn. Uh, that's really the way I, I would maximize this guy and get the most out of him, right? So uh, in this video, we're going to look at his calls, his artifacts, and his spheres. And then we'll do a quick little showcase and we'll check out, see what his damage is looking like. I think he's not like max maxed out, but he's pretty darn close. We should get a pretty good feel of what his damage is going to look like, right? So honestly, his calls, I don't think this is a call I would ever use. I wouldn't pull on him for the call. Uh, Renzo Kukin is just an AoE attack, does full damage, does give the caller an attack max brave up, but nothing too crazy. Uh, rough divide, uh, just an attack, <laughs> nothing too crazy. So these aren't calls you wanna use. Um, what you want out of calls is you want utility that will help you in a fight. And the three main things I look for in a call are either like defensive tech, so like something that's gonna let me dodge, let me tank damage, reduce damage to zero, something like that. Um, otherwise I'm going to want like life gain or something, or like some other kind of utility, like a turn manipulation, um, or something that's gonna put like an HP damage up, something like that, right? Um, those are kind of the three things. So like really good buffs or utility, or you want a heal, <laughs> or you want, uh, uh, that other thing I just talked about, but yeah, you, you want, you want that are like the HP negation, right? The defensive tech. So you want something like that. Um, generally some people, I know there's a couple calls that are just like really good for big attacks, but yeah, squall, I don't think is really one that you'd want for that. Let's go ahead and look at squalls, um, artifacts here. And we're going to look at the spheres. Uh, he's very simple. Um, for his artifacts, you just want attack 108, max rate 330. He's a very old character, so he doesn't have a C50 passive in here. So that's really what you want to go with. He's a damage dealer, so you want attack. Uh, so attack and max brave is what you want there. And then on the uh, spheres, um, you want the typical damage dealer things. So you want attack and you want brave damage. For Squall though, he does do a lot of brave hits. So brave damage up, I think goes a little bit farther on him. So I would slightly prioritize that maybe a little bit over attack. But if you got something like Jack, uh, Jack's Sphere is gonna give you attack and brave damage. So you can't really go wrong. So you're gonna get both there, right? And then Kuja is a nice shout out here because Kuja is a brave damage for AOE and Squall specializes in AOE. So Kuja's is one that not a lot of characters can utilize. Um, and I think it's really good to put on Squall. And the thing with both of these, Jack and Kuja, um, they're both stackable. So if you have, like I had 22 Jack Spheres, so I could have did triple Jack here if I wanted to, um, or I could do triple Kuja. So definitely feel free to like go multi-sphere if you want, if you have a bunch of the same one, right? You could do other standard ones like uh, Yang and Sephiroth if you want like attack and max brave, that's totally fine as well. But I think if you can get attack brave damage or just brave damage, that's what I would prioritize, right? Um, another thing on Squall before we move in, um, Squall does have two extra weapons that you cannot get on banners. So I do like to shout these out um, when I can. So one of them is going to be this mannequin weapon here. The mannequin weapon is in uh, chapter 2.5, like part eight or something. It's like 258. It's like 2.5.8 or something like that. So it's after 2.5, there's gonna be like another like weird section that opens up. It's like a space rift. You go into there and you're going to see a bunch of stages and there's going to be one for each protagonist and that's where you can get a copy of the mannequin weapon and then you can either max it out with power stones or you can go into the weapon shop with your power tokens. Those are the red tokens and you can buy them and they're only 15 CPs so they only cost 10 tokens. They're pretty cheap. The other weapon, I believe it's this one. I got to double check. Is it Fury Blade? Let me double check here. I got my uh, list up here. Yeah, Fury Blade is the bonus one and you do want this. Um, it is going to give him I brave and max brave up, which they're not his key stats, but they're still good extra, like it's extra stuff and it's going to give him more brave 
and give him more Brave Cap. So you definitely want this. This is only available in the Power Token Shop for 10 tokens. So you definitely want to pick that up. It's a pretty decent little gloss too. Like it's not a bad looking weapon uh, if you want to pick that up. But I like the BT. I think that's his best gloss. That's my favorite one there. Um, oh, I guess I could give him the surfboard. The surfboard's pretty sick. Sure, we'll rock the surfboard for the video. All right. So that being said, we're ready to hop into the showcase. He's a very easy character to play. That is one thing about Squall is uh, that I forgot to mention on like the should you pull stuff is if you're newer to the game and you find a lot of these kits complex and confusing, Squall actually is a good character to pick up because he's he's kind of like a caveman character. He's just very easy to play. You press some buttons. You don't have to monitor a lot. Uh, he's very straightforward. So if you want a character that's just easy to play and he is a very good DPS, he could be a good character to pick up. Now, the only thing I'm missing from Squall, his BT has a book on it, but it is not green. Uh, so we'll keep that in mind. And then he does have a max Ultima weapon. So his standard damage outside of the BT attack should be like top tier for what he can do. And then his armor is plus, but is not blue. So there's a couple of areas for improvement, but for the most part, this squall is going to be looking pretty darn good for what he can do. And we're going to throw Pinello and Garnet with him so that we can do some echo, give him some good BT auras. I'm going to do my best to make this man look good. Okay. And I'm going to see what his damage is looking like here. So let's go ahead and hop in. And take a look at our guy here, right? All right. So, we'll hop in here. So, if you're going to use Squall, um, like, as your main DPS, and you're going to use him a lot, you probably do want to green him, because his BT effect is really nice now, right? And we'll talk about that when we get to it. But Squall's simple in that you pretty much want to, like, open with this LD or use it fairly soon. And then, at some point, you would use, like, his green BT attack. Pretty much you want his LD buff and his BT buff up. Then you're free to go into force time and he's going to be good. He's going to be doing his thing. Honestly, his 15 and his 35, they're just kind of filler attacks. Like uh, he does have some basic buffs on them, but they're very easy to upkeep, right? And they're not like the craziest things in the world. So let's open up with his LD, which is called Rough Divide. And let's see what the damage looks like on my rework squall. Okay, let's see what we got here. Now notice he gets this Roaring Hammer follow-up that is from the LD buff. So he's going to follow up on everything he does. So 1.7 mil, then with some splash of like 300k. Very good damage. I like the damage. <clears throat> he's almost hitting 2 mil on that with blue armor. And, and here's the thing. We don't even have BT effects up yet. So that's probably hitting 2 mil once we actually get our BT auras up, right? So let's do this. Let's start getting that set up so we can see the damage here. And I do want to get a good look at him before force because I want to see like the standard numbers before we see like the force boosted numbers. Uh, sure, let's do the BT effect right away. And then Pinello, I'll probably just ramp a little bit um, and then put her BT effect up right away as well. Now, I do have a selfie friend I could put on launching. I'm not going to really mess with that. I just have it there in case I want some spot like charging. Um, but for now, I think I'm okay just charging with Pinello. And then, yep, Garnet follow-ups, they're going to kind of do their thing. Oh, let's talk about the LD, right? So Rough Divide does the big AoE. It does also recover a skill use of skill one and skill two. So if you're really worried about skill uses, you could use a skill use of each before you drop it. But honestly, in today's meta, like you're not running all skill uses. So I wouldn't stress about that. If you want to open LD, you are just fine to do that. Um, then it gives him a buff called Solitary Lion. It's going to give him an attack up, max brave up, and eye brave up. Pretty basic. And then... His Roaring Hammer, um, it gives it 16 turns, so it upgrades it to 16 turns. But the reason why you want to open with it, it, Roaring Hammer is a stacking buff, and the only way to increase the stacks is to actually use the LD. So you can see it's now at two stacks. It has a Roman numeral two next to the name, and that's from the stacks. And so if we look at Roaring Hammer, it does enable his additional attack. It does give him HP damage up 20%. And then basically it has an attack and an overflow buff. And those two buffs get better based on the stacks. So all you're doing is you're increasing the attack and the overflow with the stacks. But it doesn't affect his additionals. And it doesn't affect the HP damage up. Those are going to be the same from turn one. Uh, sure, we'll intercession because it's free. I got to be careful on this fight because it gets to the point where I can barely showcase the character. We kill him so fast, right? All right, so Pinello, we'll just ramp a little bit more. We'll do like two more ramps and then we'll just go to Squall. Because I do want Squall to get a few turns, right? I probably should have done like a Luna Frey or something on Squall to give him a couple of spam turns, but that's okay. Sure, let's just do a Waltz attack. Oh, I forgot to do BT attack. That's okay. 
We'll hit our BT on the next one. All right, let's see what Squall's looking like turn two here. Um, so now, actually, what I should do... Yeah, I'm actually just going to go into his burst phase because then we can get the burst effect up. So normally what you would do is you would use his green BT effect to get that, but we'll just go into actual burst phase and we'll just hit that up right away. And let's throw a Raijin while we're at it. And then in burst phase, we can just spam turns and I can just show you all of his attacks. So that's probably the best thing to do right here. And then we'll do force afterwards and we can kind of see his damage in a force. So sure, let's go into burst. <clears throat> now, a couple of things to keep in mind because he's not green, the actual burst attack we see at the end won't hit quite as hard, and his burst effect will get gimped slightly, um, but not, shouldn't be too bad, shouldn't be too bad, but yeah, he needs to be green, because he's going to get like a ton of it for being green, but we'll talk about it, so uh, we did rough divide already, so let's go ahead and let's do assault trigger, which is the EX, now his EX should hit pretty dang hard, let's see what we got for the EX damage here. Because remember, you're getting the Roaring Hammer with it. Uh, okay, 1.6 and then 9. So basically, it's like 1.6 mil with 1 mil splash. So basically, he did 2.6 mil on that. That's very good damage. Like I said, his damage is very, very good, right? Um, let's go ahead and pop the LD again. And remember, this is without Pinello's BT aura. But we'll get that up and, and we'll see some stuff with that as well. Let's see the LD. This is with Garnet's BT Aura, though. Yeah, we shot up to over 2 mil just by having Garnet's up. So, yeah, 2 mil on an LD with Splash is very, very good damage. Uh, Renzo Kuken. So, we haven't done that yet. So, let's do Renzo Kuken. Oh, let's talk about the EX. I got to finish talking about it all the way. So, Assault, is, uh, Assault Trigger is very simple. Um, just did the attack that you saw. It does extend his buffs by two turns. So if you spam it, you're going to keep extending the buffs. That's significant with the BT effect, which we'll talk about. And then he gets a Lionheart buff. And the Lionheart buff is an attack, max brave, HP damage up, and brave stolen up. So once again, more stats on that. Renza Kukin is just going to be a full AoE HP damage. So this should be full to everybody. Um, the Roaring Hammer might disperse the damage a little bit, but the actual Renza Kukin part was full. So yeah, 1.4 mil and then about a mil to the other one. So like I said in the should you pull, like every button he presses is going to be pretty much a mil or more with some splash. So the damage is very good, right? So Renzo Kukin just did the AOE attack and then it does a max brave up and an attack up and then we'll do solid barrel. Okay. <clears throat> and then the roaring hammer follow up. Okay, and then 1.6 with about 500k splash. So very good damage on every button. Like his damage is very good. Um, and then solid barrel, it did the attack you saw there with some splash. And that also gives some solitary lion. That's the buff that we saw that came on the LD as well, right? So pretty much 15 and 35, they're just filler. Really what you're doing with this guy is you're doing LD when you need to upkeep, you know, his uh, big buff or if you want to do big damage. Um, but when you're actually doing his force time, you're going to abuse his BT effect, which we'll talk about. So right now, what do I got left to use? Uh, oh, the actual FR attack. Sure, we got to pop that, right? So con Concealed Zeal. This is the FR attack with Noctis. I almost missed it because I didn't sort his skills before I went in. Let's see what the damage looks like on this. Uh, yeah, 3.6. That's heavy damage right there. Very good damage. And then here's Blasting Zone. I'll talk about the FR more when I actually use it for the FR phase. But yeah, I am not going to complain about 3.6. Once again, Squall's damage is top tier. He's very, very good. <laughs> if you all want to invest in him, definitely do it. He's very, very good. Okay. So now here's the thing. My BT effect is very gimped right now. It's only four turns. I'm going to explain what the maxed BT effect does, okay? So his max BT effect uh, is going to be eight turns. So you can see greening it's a big deal because we get double the turn count on it. Brave damage up, brave damage limit up, HP damage up. And this is all for the party, by the way. HP damage limit uh, again for 30%. And then Squall actually gets 80%. The big thing is, is Squall refills his EX gauge after every action. So basically during his BT, he can just spam EX, which he's going to output crazy damage. And so with his EX, it basically upkeeps his buffs by two turns. So basically during this BT, his buffs will never run out. You spam EX, 
his EX upticks his buffs by two turns and you just keep going. So it's just very spammable. So it's kind of similar feel to like Pinello or Machina or like Renoa, where you go into a BT phase and you spam one button over and over again. Squall is the same thing, but you do it with the EX, right? And then the other thing that his BT effect will bring is anything that does splash, the splash now gets 50% more damage. So now all that splash is going to look a lot better and that will work for the party splash as well. So Garnet, let's just pop an LD. And then Pinello's going to do her BT effect. And then, yeah, Squall's going to be popping off some mad damage here for sure. Sure, we'll break them enemies back. Pinello's going to BT effect. Um, I'm not even going to intercession. I'm going to be doing too much damage. So yeah, let's get the BT effect with Pinello. So now this is going to be Squall under triple BT aura. Keep in mind that his own auras aren't as good as they would be had it been maxed. <laughs> but we'll see. And actually, the part where he refills his EX, you might have to have it green to do that. So we'll see if that actually triggers or not. All right, so Squall... Uh, we're going to pop FR, and we'll talk about his FR conditions at this time. Let's see what the damage looks like. This should be very good damage, by the way. Triple BT auras. <clears throat> what do we got? What do we got? Ah, oh, wow. He did about 4 mil with 1 mil splash. He just did 5 mil on that attack. So, based on what I've seen, like Squall's FR... That might be the single hardest hitting FR in the game right now that I've seen. It, really, really hard damage. So, yeah, Squall's hitting like a beast. <laughs> very, very good. And now we're going to go ahead and echo a little bit. <laughs> and let's talk about his FR effects while this goes off. So you saw that big nasty attack there. Uh, during the force time effect, party HP damage and limit is up by 50% on broken enemies, which is good. And then here's his HP damage conditions. What's, let's see what Garnet got here. 63 on that. So if you do a melee ability, so Garnet did miss that. So ideally, if you want to feature his force, you'd want to run a full melee team that has AoE damage. So like Jack Garland, yeah, very good here, right? 30% for melee. And then if you have a stacking buff or an effect, 40%. So any buff that stacks. So Garnet's overhead, that counts. Squall's overhead, that also counts, right? But it could also be a buff. So Pinello... Uh, her wolf step is a stacking buff, so I believe that also counts. So this whole team should be getting the stacking buff effect. So it's not hard conditions to meet. Um, so Squall is an FR you could feature if you really wanted to. Um, what are we going to do? Oh, I suppose we can Fatal Dance, sure. <laughs> we just got to be careful. These enemies are going to pop pretty quick. <clears throat> All right, so let's do a little comparison. Pinello just did 3.6 mil on a Fatal Dance, right? Let's see what uh, Squall's Echo does here. This is going to be pretty big damage. Now, the, the gauge is a little bit higher, but considering we did 4 mil with, like, no multiplier, like, this is going to be a nuke. <laughs> like, if you, you could save this for later if you wanted to, but, man, this is going to hit hard. Uh, 10 mil with 3 mil splash. He has to 13 mil, and we're at 260%. Uh, Squall is a monster. <laughs> it's really hard. Really hard. Yeah, I cannot complain about that damage. Squall is a beast, for sure. Uh, sure, let's echo again. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Let's echo again. Oh, and you know what? Um, shoot, I didn't check. He does have EX, so I think his EX did autofill. I think it did. I do want to see what his EX damage does here. Uh, honestly, we're at the point where Pinello's got a brave attack. Otherwise, she's going to one-shot. So we're going to brave attack. I kind of want to summon, but the Bahamut damage is going to be a lot. So we just got to attack with Squall here. So let's pop an EX. Knowing that we're only at 500%, what is this EX damage? And here's what I'm going to do, guys. I know I'm not getting very deep into the force here. My plan is on whatever the Shinryu fight is, I will feature Squall on that. So we'll get deep. We'll do a proper burst phase, all that stuff. And then we'll see what the damage is looking like. But I'll try to feature him there if I can. Uh, but yeah, let's pop an EX. Let's see what the damage is like on this EX. And then I want to check and see if it refills. Oh man, he's going to kill him for sure. This fight's over. 10 mil with 7 mil splash. Wow. 
That was good damage. <laughs> that was very good damage. And we actually, uh, they actually survived somehow. So I'll try to brave attack through. Try to get to another squall turn. Sure. All right, one more attack with squall. Okay, so squall's EX did not fill up. So I think you do have to have it green to get that. So if you're going to feature Squall, you really want to green it. Because one, you want to pop the BT effect before you go into burst phase. You want all the good effects. And you want that EX recharging so you can just spam EX. But yeah, overall, guys, is Squall good? Yes, he's amazing. He's really good. Top tier damage dealer. I just think over time, he will fade a little bit. But he's going to be good for a while. Like You, you can definitely use him. And the Echo is valuable. His Force Echo hits ridiculously hard. So, yeah, if you like Squall, definitely grab him. He's a really, really good character. Let me know what y'all think. Thanks for watching. We'll catch y'all on the next one.